So good afternoon, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Marta and I'll be your host uh, for today. Welcome to this webinar organized by School Education Gateway. Before we start, just practical information for the audience. The webinar is recorded and the recording might be used for dissemination purposes. And if you have comments or questions, please, uh, you can use the chat and we will uh, try to address all of them. But without further delay, let's go to the heart of the of today's event. And the focus for today is environmental literacy, making education visible. So we are very happy to have today with us uh, Dr. Pramod Kumar Sharma, who is a senior director of education with the Foundation for Environmental Education. As an education for sustainable development professional, with a broad experience of over 20 years, he has worked with a wide range of stakeholders that include school, corporate program, programming, focusing on school system, rural development issues of tribal communities, and has mentored grassroots NGOs for projects in the area of sustainable development. Thank you very much, uh, Pramod, for being uh, with us today. Before we start, one last practical information that the presentation today will be done with Mentimeter, which is an external tool subject to its own, to, to its own pri privacy policy. So please um, only share personal details at your own discretion. Thank you very much. Without further ado, uh, Pramod now, I'm very happy to give you the floor. Thank you uh, for this opportunity and uh, I will be using the tool called uh, an Mentimeter and uh, do you see my screen? Yes, we can see it perfectly. So, so uh, I think you can only if you can make it a bigger in presentation mode. I have done that in presentation mode. Because I don't know Eleonora, but I still see the yeah, okay, now, oh, yes, now we see it's a full screen. Thank you very much. Great, thank, thank you. you. So uh, for next 40, 45 minutes, uh, I will be uh, interacting with you on what environmental literacy is and how uh, we can strengthen it uh, as part of our environmental education programs or education for sustainable development programs. And we'll be stopping in between for any question and answers uh, that you might have. Some of you might be knowing, I represent Foundation for Environmental Education. It's a non-profit, non-governmental organization based in Denmark. It's a member-based organization that started with four countries in 81, and now we are eight, uh, over 100 members in 80 countries implementing different programs of fee. Three programs work with school systems and a higher education, eco-school and fee eco-campus is well known. Then we have another program called Learning About Forest, Young Reporters for the Environment, uh, which is working with individuals on thought leadership, and two tourism-based program, uh, which are labels called Blue Flag and Green Key. So I will be using Menti uh, Meter to make this presentation and interact with you. Please uh, go to menti.com and enter the code 35889090. And you can press the heart button at the bottom just to let me know that when you are uh, inside the app. Yes, I can see that two people have already accessed the app. I will wait a couple of more minutes. Go to menti.com and use the code 35889090. And while you are uh, trying to set the app, you can also tell me from where you are joining the webinar. Ah, I see one dot in Pacific Ocean. <laughs> so we have people from outside the Europe also. But then uh, as we see two dots from Europe, yep. South of Europe, two people from Eastern Europe, 
it looks like turkey malta greece portugal great this is a like, wonderful uh, map representing the ma the major fauna of different parts of the world as you can see wonderful so we have a couple of people from northern europe also nice so as you are thinking and uh, and might have been thinking about what this uh, session would be about just give me some examples of your environmental education project and activities in brief titles only like what kind of environmental education activities or projects that you do marine litter inter, uh, inventory interesting Yes, Ukraine is a topic, peace, war, and all those aspects which are important part of sustainability, natura, nature. Eco school is a generic topic. Environmental education projects. Eco school is a program under which what kind of programs you are doing? Community coastal cleanup, garbage art. Water is a very broad topic, but anything specific that you do in water. Cool green poster. Then I have a STEAM, STEM, linking with science education, policy for environmental education. Nice. Maybe somebody from European Union, green environment, recycling, ebook on environmental topics, journalism. Trash fashion, that's interesting. Eco school upstream battle, combating oscillator via river pollution. Wow, yes, making that those connections. Fast fashion, very important topic. Sustainability, renewable energy, diversity of ink, ink reduce fast fashion, recycling. Great, around almost 41 people have responded. So, the share what impacts did your environmental project or activities created you shared a lot of wonderful activities uh, or projects what did impact it created try to be very specific as possible not as much as desired okay i'm asking what impacts Poor, let's judge, judge the, whether they were poor or not as per the desire, as per our standard, but what kind of uh, impacts did they create? For example, clean up, re react. Students change their actions. Wonderful. Schools reducing litter. Mentality changing. Okay, that's more about attitude, positive impact, awareness of one own territory. Yes, how, how do we really measure impact? One of the projects has made students more aware of nature protection, increasing awareness, mental changes, water, introduction of the recycling corner in the institution. These are activities, yes. Active learners, active students with environmentally friendly habits. That's nice behavior, more awareness, not a lot. Community participation in local environmental projects, increase outdoor learning, engagement and eco awareness of all participants. What else? Uh, your environmental project or activities? Improving the environmental profile of school performance. Great. Speak, wait for a minute more. 
Can you be more specific student awareness, raising awareness of environmental issue, reduce coastal garbage for a short period? Unfortunately, yes, that's a challenge. Awareness. A lot of awareness uh, and increased outdoor learning. A uh, lot of uh, ch talking about mental changes, uh, awareness of climate change, awareness on own territory, mentality changing. Different aspects that we associate uh, with environmental education, as we can see. Direct involvement of students in COP26. Students are also differentiating school material for the first time. Segregating, I think, segregating the waste. Students discovered the diversity of marine fauna. Wow. Increasing. So a very diverse uh, set of uh, impacts that has been created as part of your environmental projects and activities. Great. Now the question is the coming to the topic like what is literacy? How do you define literacy when we talk about environmental literacy? But the, the word, let's uh, discuss about the word literacy. How do you define it? Knowledge. Knowledge about anything. Yes. Competence. Competence in a skill, ability to use knowledge for action, great. Being able to read, but also understand the read. Yes, that's the definition. That capacity of ability, understanding, competence, skill, right language, other understand, understand leading to behavior change, factual information, culture safe, communication, competence. Interaction. Ability to communicate acquired knowledge, transmission, value about nature, basic knowledge, Ability, reading, understand, writing, action, skill, background knowledge, competence, entrepreneurial skills. Entrepreneurship is also an important part. I agree. Safe. Great. Safe. I didn't get it. What do you mean by safe? Wonderful. So there are many definitions of uh, literacy. Uh, popularly, it is understood as an ability to read, write, and uh, numeracy. That is mathematics in a, at least one method of writing, and which is language and understanding reflected by mainstream uh, dictionaries. So this is a definition which is given by most of the dictionaries. Then literacy is also uh, often used to mean having knowledge or skill in a particular field. So environmental literacy, when we talk about is the literacy of, in the particular field of environment, it could be mathematical literacy or it could be language literacy. So having knowledge or skill in a particular field. And the third, which is defined by PISA, is the capacity of a student to apply knowledge and skills. And many of you talked about competences and the ability to transfer that knowledge and skill into uh, key subject areas and to analyze the reason and communicate effectively as they pose. And some of you also highlighted the, the important part of communication or com communicate uh, as they pose, solve and interpret problems in variety of situations. And then when we look at uh, Two words that were also used in a lot uh, when we were discussing about the impact is uh, is environmental education and environmental awareness. And you s mentioned about uh, environmental awareness raising uh, uh, being raised. So how many of you think that in environmental education and environmental awareness are the same? Or is the same? No. 
Not sure, 9%, 25% are saying yes. Interesting. So most of you, around two third of you think out of the 30 people who have responded, for, uh, that means around 20 people think that it's no, it's still 14 percent saying yes and 10 percent are not sure about whether they are same or not. If you are not able to participate, you can go to the website call or uh, on your smartphone, open the browser and type menti.com as you can see on top of the slide and use the code 35889090. 35889090. Good. So two thirds of the people, uh, participants here, uh, think that they are not the same. So awareness, as you are right, uh, awareness is just one component of uh, environmental uh, literacy or environmental education. And the first definition was given at the UNESCO UN uh, Intergovernmental Conference at Tbilisi in 1977. And this definition uh, is mostly used by most of the organizations and uh, has been modified a bit, but most of the elements are the same. So. It is the ability uh, or in terms of outcome is about raising awareness to help social groups and individuals uh, to with the awareness sensitivity to total environment and its allied problem. And most of it is about uh, campaigns and uh, telling about that climate is changing or something like that, which tells them that there is something happening. But then it differentiates from knowledge, uh, which is to help social groups and individuals gain a variety of experiences in. And that is what we are trying to do, uh, help them gain variety of experiences and acquire basic understanding of the environment and the associate problems. Then going to, and changing in terms of uh, looking at attitudes, which are an important determinant of behavior to help social groups and individuals acquire a set of values and feelings of concern for the environment and the motivation for actively participating in environmental improvement and protection. And then environmental education in terms of its goals also has the element of development of skills, which is also related to competence to help social groups and individuals acquire the skills for solving environmental problem. So it's just not about having awareness uh, or knowledge in depth or uh, having the right attitude, but it's also the ability to solve and get engagement uh, through participation, which has also been highlighted as the last one in terms of uh, when we look at environmental education and that's objectives that uh, to provide social groups and individuals with an opportunity to be actively involved at all levels in working towards resolution of environmental problems. So when we look at environmental education, it is different from awareness. It includes awareness raising. It includes building knowledge. It includes changing attitude. It is, includes uh, development of skills and competence and also getting them engaged in problem solving at all levels uh, possible. And North American Association for Environmental Education in 2011 worked on uh, the, uh, the research since 1977 and be even before that to develop a framework for assessing environmental literacy. And uh, they define environmental literate, uh, literate person or a student in our case to possess uh, to varying degrees. That's important to varying degrees because there is no absolute uh, knowledge. They, every, we all know something or uh, other of all the aspects. And so it, it is a continuum. So it, they defined it in terms of having uh, knowledge and understanding of a wide range of environmental concepts, problems and issues. A set of cognitive and affective disposition, that is we talked about attitude in the definition of 1977, and then set of cognitive skills and abilities uh, to solve the problem, engage with the problem, and the appropriate behavioral strategies to apply such knowledge and understanding in order to make sound and effective decision. And uh, 
this treats uh, cognitive part, which is to do with brain in terms of knowledge, skills, and abilities, affective and behavioral competences, both interactive and development in nature. So they interact with each other. Attitude has an impact on uh, uh, behaviors. Uh, knowledge has an impact on attitudes. And they interact uh, uh, and continue to interact over the lifetime as lifelong learners. So nobody is either environmentally literate or literate. We are on a continuum. We know something or the other and have some attitude or behavior. But we want to increase that as part of our own activities, as part of environmental education or education for sustainable development. So just asking you to what extent your projects uh, project had uh, documented impacts uh, in terms of awareness, knowledge, attitudes, skills and participation. Great, uh, 100%. The first participant that they had clear impact uh, or documented impact, which they can show in terms of awareness, knowledge, attitude, skills, and participation. But as we see, uh, it's changing with 11 participants. The least uh, area in which we have been able to show, document uh, or show impact is in the area of attitude and skills. Participation is high because we are able to involve children either as part of eco committee or eco projects, and that's uh, is reflected. So if you look at the response, it's coming clearly that most of the projects have been focusing on raising awareness, uh, uh, knowledge, uh, which we have been able to show, or participation as, in terms of how many children or what they did as part of environmental activities or projects, but very less in terms of skills or uh, looking at behaviors to take action or changing attitudes, which is also a determinant of uh, behavior. So, so when we were looking at uh, knowledge, uh, the research also uh, defined it in terms of what uh, is knowledge. So to it is basically uh, to what extent uh, you know about physical and ecological systems, which is what we usually is uh, taught in the sciences, whether it's biology, geography, or to some extent chemistry and physics also. Uh, then the second is in terms of social, cultural, and political systems, which is part of civics, history, of, in terms of looking at how our societies, our consumption patterns, the culture, and uh, the political systems uh, de uh, define and decide uh, the impacts on environment. Then talking about and having knowledge about issues of environment, knowing about the problems that we are facing or we have created and then multiple solution to environmental issues. So it is also just not having the knowledge about the problem, but it's also having knowledge about different solutions we can have, whether we are applying them or not, but knowing like what, how we can solve the problem is also part of the knowledge building. And the third is in terms of how citizens as uh, we can participate and what kind of actions we can take. So some of the actions are already being taken. For, for example, children have been motivated by uh, uh, Fridays for Future and climate activism, and and they know that is a one way of uh, basically expressing themselves uh, to different people and raise awareness and issue uh, about the issue of climate change. The second area uh, which uh, it's highlighted was the competencies. 
which is a combination of skills and abilities that you know how and when to apply. This is important, uh, knowing how and when to apply those. So the skill of identifying environmental issues, uh, being able to see what is a problem uh, and uh, and then talking about or asking questions about environmental condition and issues, being able to raise questions, and identify uh, uh, right questions to know more about it or raise the, those issues with the different stakeholders. The uh, ability to analyze environmental issues and uh, find uh, do those uh, analysis to find out why those are happening, where they are happening, looking at investigating environmental issues, scientific and social aspects of issue using primary and secondary sources. Many of our programs are already doing that. Young Reporters for Environment is a good example. Uh, when we do audit as part of the seven step process of eco school, we are doing that. Then looking at evaluating and making personal judgment about environmental issues, the interaction between environmental congestion and uh, social political system, the way our market are shaping uh, different uh, consumption patterns and how advertisements are uh, making us consume certain things. Those are also uh, part of the competency in, in terms of ability to evaluate and make a personal judgment, whether it's a greenwashing, whether I need that product or not, whether this product is better than uh, the product that I, I, I want to, or I have been consuming, or whether uh, organic or going meatless is better for environment. Looking and, uh, and evaluating those and taking decisions is an important part of competencies. And then using evidence and knowledge to select and defend one position. So one uh, way of looking at it is from an emotional that, okay, we should save environment, but then coming in with facts and uh, and that's what the movement is all about nowadays is that believe in science and use evidence and knowledge. It's, just, it's not a rhetoric that we are looking at. And then creating and evaluating plans at various scale levels to resolve environmental issues. How much is enough? What we need to do as society, as corporates, and at different levels as our municipality, and uh, being able to uh, look and identify those uh, plans is part of important part of competencies. And then the third area is about disposition which is an important indicator of behavior, that how you respond to environmental issues. What is your inclination? If you see a paper on street, whether you will pick it up or not, uh, that's disposition. So it's all about sensitivity. It is all about attitude and concerns towards the environment. It is about assumption of personal responsibility, which is an important indicator to what extent I believe in my own uh, responsibility to act in a certain way to solve, resolve or mitigate environmental problems. And which is also an uh, important element uh, in terms of, uh, because behavior is determined by locus of control and self-efficacy. These are two important aspects. And that is why uh, the important part of knowing that so many people are taking uh, actions around the world to resolve the environmental issue. Because otherwise, we will think that we are only an individual and our action doesn't matter. And that is a question of self-efficacy is to what extent my environmental activity or project will make a difference. And many of you highlighted in the beginning that not much environmental issues have not been because that's another barrier that we see. And locus of inter control in terms of whether the motivation is from self or uh, because it is because of a project that has come from outside. We are involved in an environmental activity or a project. And then motivation and intention to uh, act. And which ultimately leads to environmentally responsible behavior, which is involvement in intentional and habitual behaviors individually or as a member of group that works towards solving current problems and preventing new ones. So if we look at uh, environmental literacy and looking at education within this, uh, we look at we are looking at uh, changing behaviors as literacy outcome or uh, building dispositions, building competencies and uh, different areas of uh, knowledge domain. And we have to work on all aspects uh, and uh, see this as part of education or environmental education. And they interact with uh, each other. 
knowledge disposition and competencies interact with hr because knowledge uh, as it was highlighted that uh, based on science evidence uh, we develop disposition and then uh, competency and abilities to act through projects and practicing them and uh, there are contexts personal social and physical which uh, might be enabling mechanism or barriers to environmental responsible behavior and feedback reflection help in literacy delve that at every step that is the role of education as the educators that how do we help the learners to reflect and give have feedback so that they can uh, increase their knowledge and increase the depth of their understanding and uh, improve their higher order thinking skills any questions Are there any question in the chat? Hi, Pramod. I think we uh, I'm checking, but I think for the time being uh, we do not have uh, questions. So maybe uh, we can. Uh, they are asking, can you show environment environment response slide again, please? Well, I remind the participant also that the slides will be available on the on the webinar page. Uh, but indeed, I encourage the attendees to to post also the questions in the chat. And now I think we can move on, Pramod, and then we can leave uh, sometimes towards the end. Yes. Uh, Maybe they that. still need to reflect yes. and come up with some questions. But so I think if, you can proceed. Thank you. If you don't have a question, any uh, comment? Uh, everything is soon. clear. Hey. It means that everything is really clear. <laughs> uh, it's I, either I would say either it is clear or it's very confusing. So you don't <laughs> you don't know what the question or the direction okay. should be. <laughs> so it's okay, extreme. I hope positively and think positively that everything is clear. Let's move forward then. <laughs> Thank you. So uh, let's now uh, we, we were discussing about uh, reflection. So how your future environmental education pro project activities be different now? We went through that what environmental literacy really means uh, and uh, you raised different issues and how we need to work on different dimensions. We looked at that uh, uh, if we want uh, environmental responsible behavior, we need to look at knowledge, disposition, competencies, and uh, and uh, so that we can shape the behaviors and create impacts in long term, short term, and long term. So, how your future environmental education project be different uh, if you look at uh, need to find a way to measure long term behavioral change? Yes, that's the biggest challenge in long term or longitudinal studies. Uh, are difficult and uh, not much has been done, which is a gray area. But then we can always look at uh, students because uh, we run programs in eco schools and we have been running for 25 and we are trying to reach out to uh, people who have been part of the program to see what difference it made. And the research is showing children, especially who were actively engaged as part of eco committee, changing for life, but uh, cannot be definitely said for other students whose engagement was light. Include reflection activities. That's important. Reflection only leads to learning because reflection is thinking. And one of my favorite uh, uh, basically suggestion is that if you have to evaluate whether the, the change will happen is or not, ask in a project and activity that who is thinking. If the teacher is thinking, not much will happen. If the students are thinking, a lot will happen. Needs longitudinal study, yes. Uh, add measurement of attitudinal change. Yes, because knowledge which we traditionally measure is not a good indicator of behavior. Attitude is a good indicator of behavior. So higher the change attitude or disposition, there are more chances of environmental responsible behavior. Want to start this in primary schools and work with some children as they move to secondary school. Yes, that's a good strategy uh, to work with. Include reflection activity. It should be more transverse and not linked to sciences only. Yes, we realize in terms of knowledge, we need to build it on socio-political system, civic edu education. It's just not about sciences. 
stating clear action to be implemented. Yes, that's important. I think we need more support for informal groups. I, I yes, that is important because they need to practice it outside the school, just not as academic projects. Active citizenship aspects is also an important uh, part. Add measurement of attitude. Uh, there is an interesting, some kids are interested and some don't care or understand or feel it is relevant to them. The letter need government and contract. This is also the society. So many people think they are relevant. So we have to think and understand why they feel that uh, the things are not relevant. And then that there the project would be to make the things relevant and so help them understand. And that's what the engagement is all about. We will include evaluation on the long term impact. Yes. Including environmental education as part of the curriculum. That's important. Give publicity to the results. And results from an environmental education or environmental literacy perspective, not about just how much energy is saved, how much liters of water is saved, or uh, how many sacks of uh, garbage was collected and one of the teachers highlighted uh, that the cleanup only leads to a, a change in the small terms because we, uh, a small period and the, the the place is again dirty or littered with waste and the reason is that we are only engaging them for a shorty short period and not reflecting on how we can solve the problem in long term and reflecting on the behaviors OK, so almost 30. Now let's get into uh, the next part of the presentation is in terms of what is environmental citizenship. So any uh, ideas or any uh, reflections from your side? What is environmental citizenship? What do you understand by environmental citizenship? You can go to menti.com and use the code 35889090. Everyone taking responsibility for not worsening climate change. Everybody taking responsibility. So the keyword is everybody and everyone and responsibility. Taking responsibility again, taking responsibility. So is there element of rights and responsibility? What is my right and what is my responsibility? Taking active participation. Very good. Active participation. Participation is key in terms of when we are looking at citizenship. Active and proactive. Act, participate actively in the personal responsibility. So active participation, personal responsibility, uh, everyone. Responsible attitude and so responsibility is one keyword that is coming out very strongly in the feedback. And then learning how to become responsible, learning about pro environmental behaviors, it's generic, but then uh, responsible, active, proactive. Longing I'm part of it. Wonderful. So there was a large uh, synthesis project from Erasmus with the European Union, and they defined uh, environmental citizenship or responsible pro-environmental behavior of citizens uh, is basically who act and participate. So action is important, but important uh, as part of the responsibility, and then participation is important in society as agents of change. So it's not about changing myself or changing my own behavior, but also influencing others in the private and public spheres, both as individual, as person uh, in private and my family, but in also public space where, with my friends in schools and uh, in the community that I live on local, national and global scale through individual and collective actions in the di directions of this directions are important. 
solving contemporary environmental problems, solving contemporary, so whatever problem that exists, it is not about reading or learning about theoretical issues, but engaging and solving the problems that I have in my uh, surroundings, prevention of creating new environmental problems, how we can mitigate and have behaviors that doesn't create new problems, achieving sustainability and developing a healthy relationship with uh, nature. So solving, taking responsibility to solve problem, engage with those, work with other people is what the environmental citizenship is all about. And it includes both the practice of rights and duties. Uh, most of you were talking about responsibility, which is duty, but then it is also about rights. Is that like, for example, access to clean water is a right of every citizen and government has or other people have the responsibility. So my rights to have clean air, clean water or safer planet uh, is an important part of citizenship and the identification of the underlying structural causes of environmental degradation. It is knowing why it is happening. It is just not behavior, but then there are economic systems, there are political systems, there are relationship between different governments, there are self-interest, which is causing the environmental degradation, environmental problem. Understanding them to solve them. Otherwise, it will be just a campaign and a short-term action uh, if we don't uh, address those issues as a part of citizens of a country and the development of the willingness and competence for critical and active engagement and then also act individually and collectively within democratic means so acting both uh, individually and as part of the groups that we do and train children through our school projects and activities and uh, it's also about inter and intergenerational justice uh, responsibility of us now to ensure that the future generation also have the equal right. And that's also part of the definition of sustainable development when we uh, talk about sustainability from an indigenous perspective uh, in terms of uh, future generation being able to have the same quality of life as we have had uh, in terms of environmental sustainability. So, Two categories of discourse. Uh, you were all talking about personal duty or lifestyle uh, in terms of responsibility, but then there is also an important that it is also a fundamental right to have clean water, clean air, and uh, there is also this approach to active citizenship and demanding uh, environmental protection from that perspective and just not what we can do, but why we should do and why I should have a clean environment for my better health and for my future generations. So when we look at uh, in terms of uh, four dimensions, actions can happen from a private sphere or also in public sphere, and it could be an individual action or it could uh, collective action. And there are some examples of uh, given. So between private sphere and individual action, you can see uh, action like promoting inter and intra generation justice, practicing environmental rights and duty as an individual. Between private and collective actions, we are talking about achieving sustainability, developing healthy relationships with nature. And preventing environmental problems, solving environmental problems is between collective actions and public sphere. All, you can look at it uh, from that perspective because it's going out and looking at solving problems which are there uh, in front of us as society. And then between public spheres and individual actions, we are talking about addressing the structural causes, which is part of the governance, corporate or market systems and things like that, and achieving critical and active engagement of civic participation and getting everybody. But what you will see that we, are, we were discussing at the core of this, when we're talking of different scale, is the knowledge, values, attitudes, skill, competence, and behavior we believe uh, we basically develop through our environmental education activities and projects. So it starts with building that environmental literacy and then we take actions in private sphere, individual uh, public sphere or collective action and individual action. But it start with development of the individual with the right environmental literacy to have the knowledge, values, attitudes, skill, competence and behaviors. And these are some of the examples of uh, the matrix that was there uh, in the previous slide. So some example between private sphere and collective actions are participating in environmental protest or demonstration, participating as a member of environmental union or organization, or it could be an like eco club. Between private and individual, it is about choosing as a consumer, recycling, composting, donation for a project. 
in public sphere it is becoming a volunteer writing a letter supporting with your presence willingness to pay environmental taxes voting for environmental issues and then actions between collective actions and public sphere in terms of environmental citizenship looks like connecting and influencing decision makers to uh, uh, organizing environmental uh, campaigns and lobbying involving in local politics head of environmental school of thought these are the uh, examples of uh, uh, that we can take uh, in different areas of environmental citizenships at both collective and individual uh, level and private and public spheres So there could be uh, type, different types of citizenship so, or citizens. So personally responsible, or it could be participative citizen. It could be socially responsible, the green citizens, what we are trying to uh, have out of the projects. And uh, the characteristics are different. So personally responsible people, uh, we have seen many around us who behave responsibly without questioning why. So you tell them to do this or do that, they will do that without asking why they should be doing it. Uh, so they take their uh, passive, but uh, they take their own uh, responsibility. And if there are rules, they will follow the rules. Participate, they behave responsibilities. And if somebody is throwing litter, they will take action. So they will get involved. And then uh, socially responsible are most active. They are, basically, they reflect critically on social justice, take actions accordingly, and try to look at it from many lenses. Uh, and people who like Greta are, uh, are socially responsible green citizens. So examples are like recycling waste uh, at my home is personally responsible. Participate is basically I educate others, and I, if I see nobody is lit, uh, uh, segregating waste, distributing leaflets on recycling, educating them, and then social responsible be looking at forums, talking about political levels, save energy, negotiate, and talking with companies, making them doing a social campaign on social media to make them change the way they produce and want us to consume. And these are the different ways. It starts with an inquiry. Uh, uh, then we uh, we get children. A project will look like this, so starting with an inquiry, then planning actions, uh, doing those actions, networking and sharing on scales uh, of all the actions, influencing others, and sustaining environmental and social change and evaluating and reflection. And this cycle goes. And since you are many of you are already part of eco school program, this is ties up with the seven steps, starting with formation of eco committee, doing monitoring and evaluation and action plans as part of civic participation, development of action plan as part of planning actions, informing and involving step as part of networking and sharing skills, eco code as part of sustaining environment and social change uh, as part of values or charter, auditing, playing, monitoring, evaluate as part of evaluation and reflection, and then environmental audit and review again as part of inquiry. So the seven step uh, process ties up very strongly as suggested for development of pedagogical approach towards uh, developing environmental citizenship among students. And then uh, to support you, we have Fee Academy on our uh, website, which is an open and free tool. You are welcome to join it. We have different courses on environmental citizenship, environmental literacy, uh, uh, education for sustainable development, and uh, project based learning to help you uh, develop the skills and ideas to do a quality environmental education activity or a project. Hi Pramod, sorry, sorry to jump in and interrupting you. Uh, I'm reading the chat that they are saying that the slides are not moving. Uh, I don't know if you if you, uh, you, you change I were, the slides. Uh, it looked similar, but then there was this. Because you now can... we we can see the environmental citizenship. Yes, and with the uh, and then you can see the certification of completion of eco commit. No, no. I will reshare then. Thank you. You see it now. Yes. 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 So I was talking about uh, the pedagogical process of uh, developing environmental citizenship. And then I spoke uh, basically shared the example of how uh, 
the eco school seven steps uh, in those blue boxes uh, ties up what the pedagogical process for uh, environmental citizenship is being suggested starting from eco committee doing the audit development of action plan monitoring and evaluation sharing uh, eco, developing an eco code and audit review and then we also uh, have fee academy to help you uh, develop the skills and give you more understanding of the topic that i talked about we have courses on environmental literacy we have courses on uh, project based learning seven steps and other aspects of uh, environmental uh, citizenship so now we have more, 10 more minutes so would like to hear what is your one takeaway from the session today One takeaway, a thing that you can reflect and take away. Thank you, very nice, but I was uh, looking for more critical feedback. Yes, the future, but what in terms of your future? That's very uh, important. Need to consider which country and which curriculum situation and ways to best to do to do this work. Yes. Is important because yes, uh, education is uh, part of the culture and the education systems, and uh, we need to have that uh, as part of our activities and uh, plan. Importance of reflection in environmental literacy. That's thank you. That's an important aspect. Then a better understanding on what environmental literacy is. Great. Thank you. Uh, information about inf thank you inform them about it but uh, also uh, of, uh, please inform them about different courses we have even for students on fee academy environmental literacy was made clear measuring and demonstrating impact is key yes but just not environmental impact look at environmental literacy impact Change in knowledge is usually done by our education system, but how we can measure and change, so demonstrate change in competencies, attitude, and also through different means, uh, through observations and other things, the change in behavior. Involvement, willingness to change and bring about change is fundamental. Yes. Elaborated presentation. Thank you. Systemic approach to environmental system and its evaluation. Great, thank you. Keywords, active awareness and reflection. Importance of environmental education. Great, you're welcome. You can join. Uh, I don't know from which country you are. You can find the details on our website on how to join the program. Yes, this is an important we are and that's what we were talking about environmental citizenship and as educators, it is also important that we act together. We support each other, learn from each other and our pro problem solving or our action as environmental citizen is to prepare uh, and the, in private and public sphere, the next generation or younger generation with the tools uh, in form of environmental literacy to be able to engage and address the issues that are there. Active involvement of students. Uh, I get very useful, which help planning the steps in future projects. Better understanding about environmental citizenship. Thank you. Teaching students to be active participants. I think that's very important. I again remind you always ask the question who is thinking? If you are thinking and you are planning everything, then the learning might not be happening. Uh, it's learners who should be thinking and uh, Attitude must also be continued, not just awareness and understanding. Thank you. That's an important uh, part of environmental literacy. Uh, attitude uh, are a greater determinant of behaviors compared to uh, knowledge, awareness, or understanding. Homework. I don't know what does that mean. I got to know the difference between awareness and education and the need of incorporating knowledge, attitude, skill, was in the importance of change in behavior and change the way people look at environment. Thank you.
very elaborate and it summarizes the session. Right and responsibility out for the projects. Useful information. Yes, this is a suggestion, recommendation, and for that reason, we recommend project-based learning because that's an that's a way until we get environmental education as a subject of incorporating uh, different interdisciplinary or interdisciplinary uh, action that is required. So yes, we can be of major change. Yes, so. So these are the two references that I had used uh, during this. You can uh, know more about these topics from these references. Thank you. For Thank you very much, Pramod. Actually, many people are also typing in the chat. Uh, we we have a lot of positive comments. Thank you for such a great support. Uh, thank you for the interesting presentation. And they are saying that it was really, really clear. <laughs> And they thank now you. feel more aware about this topic, definitely. And actually, thank you very much for for giving us the possibility to interact as much as possible. I think it was uh, really, really nice that they could express at their best their thoughts, not only in the chat as we as we usually do. Um, I think we had uh, one question. If you have one minute, maybe to stay with us. Uh, the we question was minutes. related to the slide about the um, environmental uh, citizenships and the rights. Um, and Sarah was asking, uh, uh, what what if this is not such thing as rights, though? Whose right takes precedence? The like my right becomes your responsibility or your right becomes my responsibility when we are looking uh, living in a community so i think uh, I, if you look at from a right and responsibility perspective it is uh, respecting spaces and my uh, when i'm expecting a cleaner environment then uh, as my right then it's my responsibility to ensure that i behave in a certain way uh, and one example that i have uh, usually we used to uh, talk about when we were talking about sanitation uh, in many places is that leave the toilet as clean as you would like to uh, have. So that explains the right and responsibility that you have the right to have a clean uh, toilet, but that your responsibility is to leave it uh, clean for the next person that will be using it. So it's it goes together uh, uh, in in most places. Yes, to what extent you want to apply it uh, uh, from an individual perspective, family, school, political system will be determined by many things. Yeah, indeed, I think it's really about collaborating uh, and and supporting uh, each other for for what it concerns. Uh, the right. Nobody comes first. Let's say it's just yeah. an interconnection. Uh, you know. Yeah, you can't. Maybe you can, once it, you'll be the first one, and the other way around be, for the time yeah. after. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. yeah. It will be like the moment I express my right, uh, I am expressing my responsibility also at the same time. Yeah, exactly, indeed. Okay, so uh, I think we are moving towards the end. Before we leave, just uh, the last practical information. Uh, we have posted the feedback form in the chat because we would like to, to hear from you as well. Uh, so please uh, remember to save the link before we close it, uh, and then you can also fill it in afterwards. Okay, uh, thank you, thank you very much, of course, to all the attendees, but especially thank you, Pramod, for for being for accepting our invitation and for for being here today with us, giving such an interesting and inspiring presentation uh, for all the teachers and the, the attendees here. And uh, before we close, before I close, actually, I would like to leave you the floor for a final suggestion or a final comments uh, that you might have uh, for the for the audience. Uh, thank you, Marta. There were uh, some of the questions and we will be happy to uh, interact and provide you with any kind of support and help you need uh, with projects and ideas. And uh, 
now we are developing resources and examples uh, to help you to implement the projects and uh, in a better way and also understand uh, impact from just not the environmental perspective but also from the educational perspective because that will continue to make that change uh, i uh, my often uh, my favorite one of the favorite quote is that education should not happen by accident it should happen by design in an environmental education project and uh, we have now a lot of uh, resources on fee academy uh, it's completely free please feel free to uh, use and access the resources that are available and if you have uh, wonderful resources share with the, us and we will also be uh, happy to share them with the larger network so that uh, we can uh, address the biggest challenge that we have in from in front of us uh, in terms of environment wonderful so uh, do not hesitate to get in touch in case you have uh, you want to exchange more yeah. okay uh, thank you thank you very much for spending this uh, hour together i think we can close close it here so i would like to wish you a nice uh, evening everyone and stay safe thank you thank you again pramod for, for thank joining you, us thank you for this bye bye everyone bye.